Good morning, and welcome to worship here at Salem Lutheran Church this morning. Also, greetings to our friends and those watching on Facebook. We invite you to worship with us whenever you are able. Pastor Mike is on vacation this week and will return to the office on July 13th. Um, we will begin with a capital appeal announcement this morning. You will notice that in your um, bulletin there's a card to fill out. The capital appeal team is trying very hard to keep the cost down for this next three-year campaign. So the more volunteer help that we can provide, um, the less our costs will be. So we're trying to do that. So if you will um, look at the information and consider joining the Capital Appeal Team or writing information for the Connection or the E-News. And we also need people to be proofreaders, um, people willing to write bulletin announcements, daily devotions or prayers, or do PowerPoint presentations. And we're also looking for people to take photographs and do some collages with those. And we have a couple of volunteers for the photographs, but we can always use some more help with that. So if there's any of those things that you would be willing to do, please complete this and put it in the, in the offering tray today. Thank you. And I also have been asked to announce that script orders are due this Sunday. The forms are just as you leave the um, sanctuary, and so as you're going out the door, you can pick that up and fill it out if you're interested. Summerfest is happening this August 13th and 14th. The sign-up sheets are posted back on the wall as you leave, so please sign up to be part of this fun event. And then we have Vacation Bible School coming up very soon. And you'll notice that back on the kiosk there are forms, so if you have children, grandchildren, or neighbors that you would like to have participate, be sure to get these filled out. Um, today is the deadline for registration, so please get that taken care of. Um, today, Salem is also leading worship at the Care Center in Crosby at 1.30. So help is needed and appreciated to get people in there and also return them to their rooms afterward. So if you can be at the building at 1.15 um, on the porch at the back of the building, that would be very helpful. There's more information in your bulletin. Are there any other announcements? Go ahead. Should I start reading some of your notes, or should I just work with my honor? If you want to, go right ahead. So, Summerfest is four weeks from tomorrow is the week of Summerfest. It's like, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and I'm dreading it all at the same time, being that's my first year of doing this. So, um, Sign-up sheets, as she mentioned, are out there ready to be worked on, but... I can't be up here and not talk about the gal that has done this and done such a super job. Okay, would you please stand? Please stand. Now, come on. De Debbie, yep. Debbie has her magic fingers on the dancing on the uh, computer to do that stuff. So. She invited me over several weeks ago to kind of get me up to speed, if you will. I was there for an hour. I told her, I only got a third of what you've told me, so I'm coming back tomorrow. So I got the, I got the second third on, the, on the, the second day, and I said, no, I'm still not there. So the third day, we started back with the beginning of her pitch. So I'm not sure what I'm going to miss because the last third, what she told me about, is still up in the air someplace. So, <clears throat> Those sign-up sheets this year are going to be really important, mostly because we're expecting a much larger crowd uh, than, than in other years. Some of the events that have been held around Minnesota have actually been one and a half times as great. So people, I think, have been so pent up with COVID that... You know, here they come. So some of those lefsas and meatball girls and whatever are going to need as much help as they can end up getting. Also, there's a 
box out there for donations. And that kind of highlights in today's bulletin of how that money ends up being used. So you can, if you want to make a monetary uh, donation, that would be much appreciated. I do want to thank the 15 people who helped this morning uh, in carrying the white four-door Mercedes from the parking lot. <laughs> and we were, able to, we were able to get it into the trailer. I, I'm not sure, but I wonder put it in the park. I don't know why he did that, but. <laughs> donations, we're still looking for donations. COVID has really made, made it difficult for all of us to find that something. Um, we're having, we're, as Kay said, have faith, and we're having faith, and it's actually working. I'm starting to see some more emails and more phone ringings. We're running around looking at stuff. Not all of it is acceptable, but at least we're, we're adding to the pile. So if you can go home, actually today would be a good day to do that. Maybe, could you hold up the sermon for like 20 minutes so these folks can like go find the... I'll be darned. Maybe you should go along with them. You can just do it on the, on the way there. A Mustang convertible would be great. We'll put the Mercedes back before the service is over, so it's, you know, it's going to be all right. All right, I think that covers it all. Uh, remember, we're not accepting couches, uh, horses, or cows. Still not taking them. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate you taking on that job. Um, please stand for the confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, and the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life, and feed us for the life of the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, and you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. We will sing Just a Closer Walk with Thee.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together. O God, from you come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works. Give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. This is the first time after COVID that we're going to have the volunteer choir. And today's song is going to be Jesus Loves Me. It's hymn number 595 in your hymnal. And while I am reading this introduction, those that would like to join us as the volunteer choir can start coming up and join us up in the choir area. Um, we decided to have it over here versus in the center just because with Facebooks and the mic microphones and sound, we'd be better off over there. So Di and, you know, Fields and all of you guys can start coming up and forming a choir over here. Steve, yep, you can come up. Grab your hymnal and 595. Jesus Loves Me, written by Ann B. Warner. I tell you the truth, anyone who will, will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And that is from Luke 18, verse 17. This story is told of a brilliant professor at Princeton Seminary who, who always left his graduation class with these words, Gentlemen, there is still much in this world and in the Bible that I do not understand. But one thing I am certain, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And gentlemen, that is sufficient. Without doubt, the song has been sung more by children than any other hymn is simply stated, um, one by Ann Warner, written in 1860. It is still one of the first hymns taught to new converts in other lands. Miss Warner wrote this text in collaboration with her sister Susan. It was part of their novel, Say and Seal, one of the best-selling books of that day. Today, few individuals would know or remember the plot of the story, which once stirred the hearts of many readers. But the simple poem spoken by one of the characters, Mr. Linden, as he comforts Johnny Fox, a dying child, still remains the favorite hymn of countless children around the world. So everybody in the congregation is invited to sing along with us. The words are going to be up on the, the screen. And I'm just glad that we've got a wonderful turnout here.
Amos is not the kind of prophet attached to temples or royal courts. Rather, he is an ordinary farmer from Judah, the southern kingdom, called by God to speak to Israel, the northern kingdom. God's word of judgment through Amos's conflicts with the king's court prophet, Amaziah, whom Amos encounters at Bethel. A reading from Amos chapter 7. This is what the Lord God showed me. The Lord was standing beside a wall built with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. And the Lord said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, see, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will never again pass them by. The high places of Isaac shall be made desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. And, I'll, and I will rise against the house of Jeroboam with the sword. Then Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent to King Jeroboam of Israel, saying, Amos has conspired against you in the very center of the house of Israel. The land is not able to bear all his words. For thus Amos has said, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel must go into exile away from his land. And Amaziah said to Amos, O seer, go, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there. But never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary, and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Amaziah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from, the fo from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. Be we will read responsively from Psalm 85. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. The word of the Lord. Be God. In Jesus, all of God's plans and purposes have been made known, made known as heaven and earth are united in Christ. Through Jesus, we have been chosen as God's children and have been promised eternal salvation. A reading from Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he has lavished upon us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven, and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him, who accomplish, accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, 
so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you heard, when you had heard the true word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. As Jesus and his disciples began to attract attention, Mark recalls the story of John the baptizer's martyrdom. Like John, Jesus and his disciples will also suffer at the hands of those opposed to the gospel of salvation. The gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. King Herod heard of the disciples' preaching, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it's Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked listening to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his officers, and the leaders of Galilee. When Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest, and the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. And immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter, gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother, and when his di disciples had heard about it, they came, took his body, and laid it in a tomb. The word of the Lord. Be Please be seated. <sighs> Good, morning. Good morning. As you can tell, I am not Pastor Mike but he will be back in this pulpit next week. And I must say that when Pastor asked me if I would do the sermon, he caught me at a weak moment and I said, mm, okay, I suppose I can do it without looking at what the gospel lesson for this Sunday was. So, <laughs> yay, lucky me! I get one of the few gospel readings that doesn't mess, m mention Jesus at all. Instead, it's all about Herod and John the Baptist's death. Now, Pastor Mike, I will say, did send me some helpful resources to read, so I thought, okay, this is still going to be all right. <sighs> but as I did the research, however, I figured out that I'm still on my own here. 
since many of the pastor's comments were that they wish that they had taken a vacation this week so they didn't have to deal with this passage. So, way to go, Pastor Mike. You got out of this one. (laughs) So please bear with me as I share some of my thoughts on this passage. This story Mark put in here about the death of John, to me, seems like a new news flash, sort of like an interruption in the middle of a story. It's sandwiched between Jesus sending his disciples out two by two to preach about repentance, and then when they came back to Jesus to report what they had done. It's kind of like a, we interrupt your regular scheduled program with this just in from Galilee. Mark starts out with King Herod having heard of Jesus since he was starting to be known in the area and what people were starting to say who they thought Jesus was. Oh, it's Elijah. No, 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 no. It's one of the prophets from old. And then someone else said, yep, John the Baptist it's raised, is raised from the dead. And Harold goes, yep, pretty sure it was John whom I beheaded that has been raised from the dead. And this is where Mark goes into the details of the story of John's death. Mark's gospel was written after the fact, so Mark had the advantage of looking back at the whole picture and how events could be tied together to support the whole. And Mark starts his gospel, even, in chapter 1, with the verses from Isaiah, which talks about the voice crying in the wilderness, the one who came to prepare the way of the Lord. So John is at the beginning of Mark's gospel. Then John baptizes Jesus, and then Jesus is driven out into the wilderness. John is mentioned again now when Jesus comes to Galilee after John had been arrested. Now some of the commentaries and the comments by some of the theologians talk about how this story of John's death in chapter 6 foreshadows Jesus' death. Verse 29 says, John's disciples heard of his death, and they came and took his body and laid it in the tomb. One pastor said, well, maybe this story was written to give Jesus' followers strength to ask for the body of Jesus when they had the example of John's followers doing the same thing at John's death. Others have said, well, it's kind of a foreshadowing of the next part of Mark, which is the feeding of the 5,000, and it points out the stark differences between the two banquets. But they still never said much about why this detailed account of something so tragic was put in there. When we read this tragic story of John's death, I believe we have kind of a snapshot of humankind in its pretty sinful state. We have the prideful, can't-lose-face Herod, the vengeful wife, and the lustful crowd of powerful men watching Salome who was Harold's, Herod's niece and stepdaughter, doing her provocative dance, all gathered at a birthday banquet given by a serving, self-serving king. And just as kind of a side note, um, never looked at the genealogy, if you want, of this family, but, oh my goodness, the apple did not ve- fall very far from the tree because the Herod and the... King Herod at the beginning of one of the Gospels where you know that he, Jesus and his parents were warned to get out of there because they were going to kill the, the kids two and under. This is this Herod's father, so the apples didn't fall too far from the tree. The family was extremely dysfunctional. And then we now have John, who was a man who called a spade a spade and who had made an instant enemy of Herodias when he told her and Herod they were committing a sin when they got married, since she was really his brother's wife. And it didn't just hurt her feelings for a little while, it turned her into an extremely vengeful woman who would go at any length to destroy John. Now Mark puts in that Herod knew how upset his wife was and that she would probably have had her own henchmen kill John if she was given a chance. So it seems Herod was trying to do something to protect John because he actually threw him in prison to protect him. The reading says that Herod liked listening to John, that he feared him and knew him to be a godly man, 
and that he was perplexed by some of the things John told him, but he listened to John gladly. Hmm. Almost makes you want to think, hey, maybe Herod wasn't too bad, just not strong enough to stand up against his own bad promise-making and losing face with this power-hungry group that he invited to his own birthday party. You know, something that us as sinners can relate to, right? But Herod did know what he was promising and what he would give to Salome, half his kingdom, was a lie. He couldn't have given her half of his kingdom if she had asked for it, since only the Roman leaders could have done that. He was just a drunken blowhard trying to show off in front of his crowd. What's interesting to me was Mark never mentions Herod again when Jesus is arrested. However, if you read Luke's version of Jesus' arrest, we have another, meanwhile, back at Galilee, moment when Pilate finds out that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction and sends him back. Again, it says, Herod was very glad to see Jesus, and he desired to see him because he had heard so much about him. Hmm. Herod, however, shows his true colors again when Jesus is called in front of him. This is the only time Herod has seen him face to face, but all he really wants is for Jesus to show him some signs, figuring, hmm, if he really was John, come back, he should be able to do greater things than John. But Jesus knew what he wanted and didn't even say a word. So Herod mocks him, dresses him up like a king, and sends him back to Pilate. The interesting part is Luke goes on to say that before this day, Pilate and Herod didn't even really like each other, but they became great friends that day. Hmm. I would have loved to have heard what went on between the two of them. I can just hear Herod saying how he screwed up and had backed himself into a corner with John's death and how they could come up with a way to wash their hands of Jesus' death, blame it all on the crowds, while at the same time furthering their power with the Roman Empire and the Jewish leaders. So, why put the story in here, Mark? Alas, <laughs> I still don't have any real theological answer to that question. For me, in these verses, it just shows again our human failings at its worst. Pretty much goes against all of the Ten Commandments and one short encounter and points to our need for a savior. At the same time, it makes me look at how the world was, is, and always will be in opposition to us as followers of Christ. There was sacrifice there, John's life, later on we know, Jesus' crucifixion, and the lives of the disciples after they went out to spread the gospel after the Pentecost. We might not have to sacrifice our own lives but to stand up and speak the truth, to be Christ-like isn't always an easy path. And many times it does put us going against the crowd. And at times it has separated us from family, friends, even our jobs and our livelihood. Speaking and acting as Jesus would have us do can make others uncomfortable and we can be objects of scorn and ridicule. I must admit, that I would never have taken the time to look more closely or deeply at this part of Mark's gospel if I hadn't been asked to do this. It was always just that isolated story of John's death. But now I have a greater appreciation of why Mark put the story here, how I hope it makes us reflect on the way of it and how it fits into the whole of Jesus' life and how it paints such a vivid picture of our human brokenness and our need for Jesus and how out of horror, just as John's and Jesus' death seemed, can come such glory and forgiveness. I'd like to end with my short paraphrasing of parts of that first lesson from Ephesians today. In him, we were chosen and included in Christ when we heard the message of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We are marked in him with the seal, the promise of the Holy Spirit, and guaranteed our inheritance to the praise of his glory. 
May the blessings of God our Father and our Savior Jesus surround all of you and keep you now and forever. Amen. Please stand for the hymn. Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we will have the sharing of God's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Okay, you may be seated while we receive our tithes and offerings. Remember to put your blue cards in if you filled them out. Thank you.
please stand for the prayer. Blessed are you, O God, the maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and we, that we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Please join in singing the hymns, Shine, Jesus, Shine. peace. You are the body of Christ. <laughs> 